Thank you. County Board of County Commissioners now in session uh, for April the 9th, 2013. Place flat. Or, Michael, if you don't mind, Yes, sir. That's probably almost gracious for one of them. All the ones who come out of any business this time. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank, thank you everybody for coming out today. Everybody make sure you got your mics on. Thank you everybody for coming out today. Uh, at this time we're going to ask for a motion on the consent agenda. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I'd like to um, pull pages 13 through 28. What is that? Mm -hmm. What do you need? That to travel files. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We have anything else that we'd like to pull? Would the board like to address this issue before we go on? I'd like to hold it for when it's my turn, if that's all right. With the okay. Okay. So move for the rest of consent. I got a motion. Second. By Mr. Yeager, second by Mr. Michael Moore. Any opposed? No opposed. Motion carries five and no. Mr. Chairman, our first speaker this morning is Mr. James Wiley in reference to the Day of Declaration. Wiley. Good morning. Good morning. I want to just thank uh, Commissioner Smiley and all the commissioners for uh, giving me an opportunity to present a great, a great event that's going to be taking place this Saturday. I realize. James, could you get a clerk your name? Oh, hi, I'm James Wiley. <laughs> I was just saying that uh, we have an event coming up this, this weekend that is a great honor and privilege, really, for our community. Uh, last year, many of you know, we presented the Day of Declaration on December the 3rd. We were celebrating the 174th anniversary of the birth of our state. And uh, it was a great event. We had Congressman Sullivan here to talk about the roots of liberty. Uh, he talked about the foundation for our Constitution and how that is intertwined with a fundamental faith in God. Uh, it, it was well attended. We had uh, about 500, according to our paper, that were in attendance. Uh, we did that in partnership with the TDC, with the Port St. Joe Ministerial Association. It, it was really a successful event. Every, all the feedback that we got from that was, was very positive. And in fact, people said, I hope that you do this again. And we are planning on doing this event again. It will be held on December the 7th uh, this year, and a, a date that's important in our history for many reasons. But we will be celebrating now the 175th anniversary of the birth of the state of Florida. Now, that, that's going to be a great event, but there's something happening this weekend, as I said, that's even uh, just more important, I think, in the process working toward the Day of Declaration. Uh, I think that a lot of our uh, history is, has been lost recently, and we need to regain that history. Uh, a lot of the foundations of our, our country and certainly of our state uh, have been lost in the shuffle of a progressive mindset, and I think that the progression that we're experiencing in our society is a pro progression away from our foundation, away from our roots. And, and you know, if we undermine our foundation, then the house is going to fall. And uh, so I just want to mention a couple of things uh, th that we need to remember. And these are the kind of things that we're going to be discussing this weekend at the Roots of Liberty Seminar that will be uh, hosted at Oak Grove Church. It's open to the entire community. It's free of charge. It's at 9 a.m. this Saturday. And Chris Ann Hall is the speaker. Now, she is uh, in demand, really, all over the country. She travels and holds these seminars to explain the foundation of our nation and to talk about the, the uh, intricate tie that there is between a fundamental faith in God and the establishment of a free government. 
And uh, some of the things that she will refer to this Saturday are statements like this from John Quincy Adams. He said, the highest glory of the American Revolution was this, that it connected in one indissoluble bond the principles of civil government with the principles of Christianity. Now, these are the kind of truths that we need to be talking about. We need to reiterate as often as we can because we know that the morality of Christianity and the solidity of a free government go hand in hand. And if we separate the two and divorce the two, well, then much of the fabric that holds our nation together uh, becomes weakened. And when we take the, the strength out of the, the fabric of the foundation, well, then it may crumble Actually, I think it, we, we see that it is. Uh, James Madison said, We've staked the future of American civilization upon the capacity of each and all of us to govern ourselves according to the Ten Commandments of God. These are our founders. Now, I don't know how often this is being taught or talked about or propagated. I know it's certainly not in media. Uh, I hope that is, it is happening in the schools, but we want to just give more tools to our educators, more tools to parents, more tools to civic government, so that whenever these conversations come up, and if, in fact, our, our uh, foundations of faith are challenged, we can, with a resounding voice, know what we're talking about and say, no, let, let, me, let me show you how involved uh, these Christian foundations are and these principles are in the founding of our government, and that if we remove those, then we remove uh, our solidity. And so I would just encourage you, uh, I'm encouraging all of the community to come to the Roots of Liberty Seminar. It's, as I said, it's free of charge. Uh, this, this, uh, if you want to look at the credentials for Chris Ann Hall and, and, and who she is, she's on uh, the web. You can just type in her name. Uh, I gave each of you a flyer there, I think, for the event. And she is phenomenal. A former state prosecutor uh, and also a state defense attorney, both. Uh, she was a Russian linguist in the Army. She is a veteran. She is now a pastor's wife, and she is a radio talk show host. Uh, you may want to tune in this afternoon from noon until 3. She's uh, taking Bernie Thompson's place on his show this week, and you can get a little taste of what she's going to be talking about this Saturday. So we, we'd like for everybody to come. There is a, we're going to have a barbecue dinner. Uh, there is a small fee for that if you'd like to stay for lunch, and, uh, or you can go to any of the great restaurants that we have in town and then come back uh, to the meeting. But uh, you won't be disappointed. This is something every, every parent should bring their child to uh, and, and let them hear uh, about the rich, rich history that we have and how it is connected to our fundamental faith in God. So uh, any questions? Uh, just a comment. <clears throat> the, the Day of Declaration last year was a great event. Uh, Congressman Sutherland did an excellent job yes. in uh, bringing the country back, or back to what, where our roots were. So I enjoyed it last year. Appreciate y'all's effort in putting it on. Well, it's, it's, it's an honor for us and something we feel like is necessary uh, to move forward in a positive direction. And uh, I'd, I'd like to see our country remain the strongest country uh, in the world. And I'd like to see our county lead the way in setting an example to other counties, uh, not being ashamed of our history and not being ashamed of the God whom we uh, just uh, included in our pledge. And uh, we, we understand that we're under his authority. I did include in your uh, handout there, that is a, a blog. Oftentimes, I think I, sometimes I can write and express myself better than I can speak. So uh, there's a blog that I had written. And uh, if you'd like to read a little bit more about the, our, our foundations of freedom, uh, you're welcome to read that. Okay? Thank you, Mr. Wilson. All right, thank you so much. I appreciate the time. At this time, we have our public hearing. We'll go to our attorney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this morning we have a public hearing with regards to a proposed ordinance, um, as you recall, back in November on the uh, election ballot. Amendment 11 uh, was a uh, proposal put to the state of Florida with regards to senior homestead exemptions and adding an additional level of exemption up to $250,000 in an assessed value. Um, it has now been uh, formalized in the form of a uh, proposed ordinance before you all. Uh, it has been advertised on March 28th in our local circulation, um, and we have it's in your packet under page number 77 for the public notice, and then the actual proposed ordinance is page 78 and 79. 
Um, it is a brief ordinance, so I'll simply read the actual amended language, if I may, and then we can open it up for public comment. Uh, the title of the ordinance uh, is the Ordinance of the Board of County Commissioners of Gulf County Amending Section 2 of Ordinance 99-07 entitled Additional Homestead Exemption for Persons 65 and Older of the Gulf County, and providing for conflicts, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. Um, the actual amended language of our 1999 ordinance for senior exemptions on homestead would read as follows. Any person 65 years of age who has legal or equitable title to real estate located within the county and has maintained such as their permanent residence as the owner for at least 25 years, and which residence qualifies for and receives homestead exemption currently pursuant to Section 6A, Article 7 of the Florida Constitution, the amount of the additional homestead exemption is 25000 or the amount of the assessed value of the property for any person described herein who has legal or equitable title to real estate with a just value less than $250,000. Um, this has been advertised. If I can, Mr. Chairman, if you'd open it up for public comment. Yeah, public comment. One from the public. From the public. Mr. Chairman, if I can, I also, um, our appraiser's office, uh, Mr. Burke and his staff, Dennis, were very helpful. Um, as we go down this road, one of the uh, logical questions that are going to come from this, are what is the impact to the county in terms of lost revenue? Um, they crunched the numbers for us in the past two weeks just so we could provide that to you all so you could understand the full impact of this ordinance when you do, if and when you do uh, pass this. Um, the numbers they've come up with were roughly $12,371 in the coming year. Um, if the numbers stayed the same as, as they are presently. Um, when they took all the qualified potential applicants and the, the assessed value of those properties, that would be a potential loss revenue to the county of $12,731. So, and I just wanted to thank them for that. Honestly, Mr. Turner, I, I really would have thought that it would have been more than that. So, I mean, that's, that's a good, uh, I was concerned about that, so I'm glad to hear that number. Uh, so I'll, I'll probably, when the time comes, uh, support the ordinance. On the staff business, Gary. Mr. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, would you Hold for a would you like to consider it yeah. for adoption at this time? If there's no further public comment, so move to adopt. Got a motion by Mr. Yeager. Second, Mr. Chairman. Second by Mr. Mike Daniels. Oh. Any opposed? No opposed. Motions carried. Five and no. All right, let's hope that this helps some people out there because people need help. Mr. Chairman, we would like to make a modification to the supplemental budget hearing that you approved at last meeting on uh, 326. It is dealing with budget. We would like to move it to 5.01 p.m. We apologize for the inconvenience, but with dealing with the budget, we figured that would be best. So moved, Mr. Chair. Got a motion by Mr. Good. Yeager. Second. Second by Mr. Mike Daniel. Any opposed? No opposed. Motion carries 5-0. Ms. Lynn? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, the board had requested that um, we schedule a workshop on our landfill. And um, for the board's consideration, I've spoken with Mr. Danford. And uh, in order to give the uh, f three or four weeks that Commissioner Bryan had asked for, um, I'm proposing a Monday, May 6th at uh, 9 a.m. for the board's consideration before we advertise that. May 6th? Yes, sir. Um, I, I, just a consensus, if the board's okay with that, uh, uh, we'll go ahead and put it on the website. And that, of course, I don't necessarily, I guess, have to be there, but uh, May 6th is a bad day for me. Okay. Monday before would, would, uh, would, would be fine, or okay. the Monday after. Okay. I don't know how that fits in with everybody else's schedule. Monday before? What is that date? Uh, April 29th. April 29th, okay. With is 9 a.m. okay? 9 a.m. on April 
We'll go ahead and get that onto the website and post that on the doors. Um, due to cost savings, we, we will publish it the week prior to in the newspaper for the public, but we'll go ahead and put it on the website we now. We, we don't need a motion for that. We need a motion for that, Mr. Attorney? Wouldn't hurt to formalize it. So moved, Mr. Got Chair. a motion by Mr. Yeager. Oh. Second. Second by Ms. Bryant. Any opposed? No opposed. Motion carries five and no. Thank you, sir. That's all I have. Yeah. Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, in front of you, you have um, the TDC's monthly report for the month of March. Um, we're have, having some, some small successes uh, out and about in the marketplace. You know that we got our, our visitor guides. We had 85,000 delivered March 21st. By the end of March 29th, we had already delivered 25,000 guides. They're in the state welcome centers. They're um, throughout the community and to qualified leads. So we are quickly going through the guides. Um, we pushed live an enhanced website as well, which is very exciting. Our whole social media network has been um, updated and branded along with the visitor guide and the, the website. Tonight we'll be hosting a social media workshop here in, in these chambers at 5.30, open to the public. We'll talk about all of our new tools and our new social media strategy. Numbers are up. Uh, we've had two consistent months, a few, three consistent months with bed tax revenues um, rising. From March of 2011 to uh, 2012, I'm sorry, to March 2013, website traffic is up 21%. Interestingly enough, from February of 2013 to March 2013, website traffic is up 87%, with 65% of those or more being new visitors. So the, the search engine marketing program we have in place, our broad um, uh, media program in Atlanta and <coughs> Birmingham, we're seeing lots of good results from those. So that's, that's very exciting. Next week, we are hosting 16 travel riders. Uh, they'll be in Gulf County all week long. They're coming with Hobie Kayak, and um, we're working in conjunction with No Worries Vacation Rentals and St. Joe's Company. They'll be staying in Windmark Beach. They're here for seven days. They will be kayak fishing on the dead lakes, um, on the canal, in the lagoon, uh, and out in the Gulf. So you'll see us um, all out and about the county. This is a really great opportunity. They represent um, Gaff Magazine and Guy Harvey Magazine. Really good, good quality list of writers. So you, you may get a call from me, and if you're around, I might introduce you to some. But they're very, um, they're very much focused on our waters. Also, we have another reporter coming in. We're going to get him up onto the Dead Lakes for scouting from AuthenticSouthern.com, and he's looking to um, do a story on the Dead Lakes. So we have a lot going on, and, um, and we're just getting ready for season bed tax collectors. Um, our rental management property uh, companies are reporting that April is also a very good month. We're pacing well for May, and the summer's pacing well. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you, Mitchell. Mr. Houston. Right. All right, they missed that. Doing all right. Uh, I have a small engine mechanic that's going to be out for an extended period of time for health reasons. I'd like to replace him temporarily. If, if you got funds in your budget, Joe, that can. Yes. Same way. Yes. Second. Got a motion by Mr. Michael Moore, second by Mr. Yeager. Any opposed? No opposed. Motion carries five and no. Thank you. Appreciate it. David. Yes, sir. Uh, in your information packet on six and seven and eight through sixteen, you have uh, some information on Flood Insurance Reform Act of 2012. Um, you remember several months ago, I brought up uh, about some changes coming up in NFIP. Um, at the time, I was kind of thought it was maybe Gulf County, but this, actually this is nationwide. And uh, these highlight some of the impacts, and they will hurt. Uh, some areas are going to be hit real hard. Um, it's uh, um, a summary of them. They're doing away with all the, uh, eventually they're going to do away with all the breaks. Uh, the compensations, the grandfathering. Um, FEMA's really doing uh, um, doing some surgery on the N NFIP program. So I advise everybody to um, um, have some packets set up beside my office and um, 
uh, to um, follow up on it and stay ahead of it. It's uh, uh, for those who maybe have built below base, you know, thinking they get away with it, they ain't going to get caught now. Um, like I said, it, it's really going to hurt. It's going to hurt governments, everybody. So uh, um, that's coming. There's nothing the board can do it. There's nothing the state can do about it. It's, it's a federal mandate. Uh, the second thing is uh, tomorrow. While you're on that, David, I think in my discussions with FEMA, they're just like any other agency now out there in any section of government. Uh, money's drying up, budgets are cut, and they're looking to the user to pay for that. The flood insurance program has taken an awful lot of hits, so it's, it's just going to operate just like they do in the private sector, and it, it is going to hurt. It's, it's going to hurt a lot of property owners on their flood insurance that's going to see some massive increases. Yes, sir. I, yes. Let me just give you an example. Mine went from $200 to over 4000 my flood insurance. So I dropped it. It's going to be the big impact is going to be on the mortgages. Right. You don't have, if you don't have a mortgage, you can, you can kind of maybe get away with it. But if you got a mortgage, it's, re it's really going to impact. The second item is uh, tomorrow at 5 o'clock in this boardroom, we'll be having the first of the LDR scoping meetings. We have two of them. The second one will be at the PDR meeting on a the following Monday, and uh, the public's invited to attend and, and make comments. So that'd be all, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Wong. <coughs> yes, sir, I do have one thing. I placed a proposed resolution in front of you today. Um, I apologize for not having it sooner. We were finalizing the details on it at about 541 last night. Um, but Don and I had previously um, talked with you about um, funding that DOT would like to give us for a TRIP program to do additional rock revetment in the stump hole area. It's a little over $1.4 million, and it's actually 2013 money, and that's why the rush to, to get it done, because we're, we're coming up on the state's new fiscal year pretty quickly, so um, she's going to be sending the agreement, and what this res resolution does is it allows the chairman to execute that agreement contingent upon the attorney, uh, attorney's review, and then um, do all the necessary paperwork we have to do to get that funding in place and, and get started. We actually won't be able to start construction now until um, after turtle season, but but we this will get everything in place so that, that we can already have the bids and permits and everything in place. Tuan's Twan, done a good job. This is uh, a partnership with FDOT. That's a, a state road. and. Uh, they've worked well with us to get get uh, our concerns taken care of in, in that road. So I would, I would make a motion to have the chairman sign the resolution. And a motion by Mr. Yeager. Second. Second by Mr. Mike Daniel. Any opposed? No opposed. Motion carries five and zero. Mr. Chairman, let me make a comment here. Uh, Mr. Kapinski, uh, we were over in Tallahassee last week, and it. Seems like the state is going to have a little extra money for some paving. First time in when? Good. First time in a few years. Yeah, but anyway, get on that. We need uh, out here in this uh, one that really sticks in my mind, and I catch a lot of flack over it. I don't represent the district anymore, but I do represent the county as a hummingbird. But we we have got to try to land a little of this money to try to offset it from the taxpayers and see if we can get a few of these roads paved or re, uh, new paving or resurfacing. But please, go after everything you can get for us. Yes, yeah, so we're actually, um, we'll have our, our quarterly uh, transportation, local transportation committee meeting next Wednesday. Okay. And I had sent out an email um, because we're getting requests in for our projects. So I anticipate at the next board meeting having recommendations for you for which roads to use on which grants. But the state has will have a little surplus money this year, and it sure would be nice if we could get out a little fraction of it. Absolutely, and, and that's what they're doing. They have sent the solicitation notices, and on some of them they're asking for two projects this time instead of just one. Good, good. Thank you. Just yes, sir. Just to comment on that, too, the... Uh, DOT's worked well with, with the entire state of small counties in general. 
there's $20 million extra in this, this, this particular budget for those scrap and scrap projects. And so not only, I think, are they asking for further projects, they may move some up on the list because they have like a five-year uh, list of those projects. So uh, they work really well. Anytime you want to send a, a letter to, uh, of appreciation to DOT, they have, they have really work, worked well. And they were at our small county coalition, uh, an off side, <laughs> meeting Thursday night. And uh, he's, he works well with small communities. That's all I have. Michael. I was hoping it would come in. The only thing I have, and, and Mr. Bryan may want to bring this up as, as well, but uh, we were expecting a resolution of support for the budget for the ARPC. I mean, uh, the governor's vetoed the budget for the last two years. Uh, it's in the House side. It's most likely going to be in the Senate side when it comes out. But if we can get the board to support uh, sending that uh, letter or signing that resolution when it comes, be a standard resolution for all the counties in the RPC uh, region uh, for the governor not to veto that budget this year and to, and to support that board. I'll make the motion. Got a motion by Ms. Brown. <coughs> Second by Mr. Yeager. Any opposed? For the um, clarification of the public, it's the Appalachia Regional Planning Council that um, we're speaking of. Any opposed? No opposed. Motion carries. Five and no. Uh, Mr. Chairman, in front of each of you on uh, the, the dais, you have uh, a letter number three. Uh, if you recall, back on March 26, Ms. Herzog appeared before you all from the Appalachia Cola River Keepers Program, and there was a conditional approval um, to support the designation of the Appalachia Cola River, uh, River Basin as a national recreational trail. Um, we've worked with Ms. Herzog over the last two weeks, and based on Mr. McDaniel's recommendation um, and conditional approval, we'd ask for your approval of this letter of support to be provided to Ms. Herzog. and. Uh, accepted as a National Recreational Trail. And I got a motion from the board. Got a motion by Mr. Michael Moore. Second, Mr. Chairman. Second by Mr. Mike Daniels. Well, let me discuss on that. Second for, for the discussion. Public. Uh, we went over this real carefully, and no restrictions to it. It's just more or less, the bottom line is they just want to name the river. It's more or less just a title. See any uh, changes to your uh, about any recreational areas, it'll all be the same. Just, just give another title. That's all. Yeah. This is good. A second by Mr. Mike Daniel. Any opposed? No opposed. Motion carries. Five and zero. No. Mr. Chairman, uh, earlier during your consent agenda, there was approval of pages 59 through 73, which is your travel expense policy and procedures. Um, you each have a package in front of you, numbered one. Um, if you can pull that out. Um, after entering that into the consent agenda for last week um, with the cover memorandum and the voucher forms for your approval, um, we've received uh, some additional comments from the clerk's office. And I direct your attention to page number three, most notably uh, definition of a point of origin and a travel expense report. Uh, in addition to that, the third item uh, is on page eight with regards to actual expenses reimbursed by other governmental agencies. Again, another issue that um, issues have come before the clerk's aid office, and they asked for some additional language to help guide the county and the staff and the officials going forward. And then page nine, with regards to air, airline travel and reimbursement of actual travel insurance, setting a, a base not to exceed of a actual total fare for travel insurance. Um, without county administrator or supervisor approval. Um, and then working with Ms. Herring and Ms. Norris, we've added those additional comments to the policy that you adopted earlier. And we'd ask you, and I have no objection, and, and ask you if you can, we can recommend that you adopt those four additional provisions as well. So moved, Mr. Chairman. I got, got a motion by Mr. Mike Daniels, second by Mr. Michael Moore. Any opposed? No opposed. Motion carries five and no. Mr. Chairman, our EMS consultants contract um, is a two-year contract that we have for our EMS billing, um, and there's an uh, automatic renewal clause in our EMS billing contract. And there's also a 60-day kickout clause in that contract. Uh, based on the recommendation of the staff, I'd ask if you would give us the approval to enter into an extension through the end of the year um, in lieu of a two-year extension on EMS consultants contract. 
Um, it's a recommendation to the staff that we um, give them the addendum to extend it through the end of this year and then revisit the issue so there's not an automatic 24 more 24 month renewal so just renewal question. to the end of the year that's correct okay so moved. <coughs> mr yeager second second by mr mike daniel any opposed no opposed motion carries five and no uh, i have nothing further at this time mr chairman yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Chairman, I wanted to discuss there. There was some information um, placed out into the public regarding the situation with the interlocal agreement between the city and the county. And um, this is in reference to the relocation of the Port St. Joe Redevelopment Agency. Um, there had been some discussion that the TDC is growing and needs more space in the building and um, the agencies that we've asked to work together all did pull together and they found some new space for the redevelopment agency to move into over at local color where the Chamber of Commerce is located and there is a small cost for relocating the redevelopment agency and that's about $760. Um, the city has proposed to allow the redevelopment agency to move, uh, provided that the TDC covers the cost of the move, and also under the lease, the TDC is required to pay for the insurance, and apparently we have not paid for the insurance for three years, but it, it is the... Um, it is the responsibility of the city to bill us, and I don't know that we've been billed. However, they said that it's $7,557. Now, also under the lease for the building, the city is responsible to maintain the grounds and the landscaping. And I've spoken with the TDC director, Jennifer Jenkins, and we have, the TDC has covered over $7,000 in landscape maintenance since 2008 which was the responsibility of the city now the city is asking for us to pay for the insurance pay for the cost of the move and also take action on the interlocal agreement I don't see the connection between moving the redevelopment agency and discussing the interlocal agreement um, there are a lot of complicated issues involved the interlocal agreement and many of them affect district 3 as well as the rest of the county and I think that we need to look at what's best for the redevelopment agency and the tourist development council and the entire county and I would like to make a motion that we have our county attorney respond accordingly and propose to the city that the TDC will pay for the $768 for the move, the $7,557 for the insurance, less the $7,118 that we've covered in the landscaping, and that the city allow the redevelopment agency to go ahead and relocate their office. This is an office that's going to be held for them until I believe May 1st. Once May 1st comes, if they have another tenant, they can go ahead and lease it out, and the redevelopment agency may not have a viable place to move. There's no additional cost for the move of the redevelopment agency other than the initial moving cost. The amount of the lease and expenses will remain the same. But that is the motion that I'd like to make. I'll second that. That I got a summarized motion. it very well. I got a motion on the table by Ms. Bryant. I got a second by Mr. Yeager. Question. Why every time we try to do a little business, we get into all kind of complications? Oh, greed, Mr. Mike Dean. That it what it is? <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I mean, it seemed like it'd be very simple. It'd be a win-win for both, but then you got to go to the kitchen sink and all the pots and pans in it. I, I don't I'd like to hear from Mr. Butler. <coughs> If I may, on your your take on this, 
You had time to look at it? I think it's reasonable, yes. Um, look at it. Um, the agreement does um, require the city of Port Sandy to maintain the grounds, and they haven't done it. Gulf County has been paying to maintain the grounds. And and it's almost a wash. We all pay a little bit of money out to get it done, but we can make the move, and, and we'll be clean. We'll be even Steven then. My recommendation would move forward on it. One other question. I'm in the dark, and I like clarification. The building that's down there now, how did that building get there? Was it constructed there? TDC building. <laughs> Give me just a brief <coughs> on that, please. A uh, brief is yes, a long story. Short story, uh, the building uh, was at one point in time a restaurant out on St. Joe Peninsula. All right, who moved it? Gulf County used Gulf TDC County money. Expense. They moved it at Gulf County's expense. And then okay. Gulf County uh, renovated the building. Total moving and renovation of about Gulf $700. Gulf County footed the bill on that. Totally $750,000. We've got a little investment in it, the taxpayers of Gulf County. Yes, and it was it was headed to Beacon Hill Park. Okay. Uh, at the point in time, uh, the um, the city asked that we um, we're not located at Beacon Hill Park. They would put it in the city of Port St. Joe, and they'd provide a piece of land for it. That's why it's located in Port St. Joe. So it, they requested it. We locate it there for them to help them. Uh, yes, they offered the land. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. I'd also like to hear from TDC Director Miss Jennifer yes. on this. What's your take on it? Well, the, the TDC team is growing. So we've gone from two um, full-time employees to four. We have, we occupy two offices. We have uh, the marketing manager in a cubby and our welcome center um, manager. We have interns coming in. It's, it's, we're, we're busting at the seams. We have lots of space. We've been working very well um, with Port St. Joe Redevelopment Agency. Gail and I have spoken about this many times. And just for us, with the amount of, we have 80 partners that come in and out. We're open, uh, we'll be open seven days a week. We just need the space if we could. Um, and we like to brand that building. And so by being able to move our stuff and have space and be able to work efficiently and continue to grow, um, we would like to occupy all of the offices. Just for one other further clarification, this 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 came before the TDC board, long before we right. this county board. That's what it came before the TDC board, of which the city of Port St. Joe, the mayor's uh, on that. Right, November on, and on December, they, they, the my council <coughs> unanimously approved this action that we move forward. With the mayor supporting that, so. Now, I had hold up. Let me finish this more. Motion. All right, go ahead. I was going to ask another question, Mr. Yeager. You put the motion on the floor, uh, Mr. Bryan. Uh, Ms. Bryan. Ms. Bryan put did. the motion. Mr. Yeager seconded. Do we have any opposed? No opposed. Motion carries five and no. Um, yes. Also, um, at, at this time, I'd like to request Mr. Sellers to come up and give us an update on the. Yay activity. Good morning. Good morning, Barry. Appreciate you having me. I've uh, got the tallies for the first quarter uh, as the end of the month. I'll give a copy to Mr. Butler and each one of you right now. been a very busy quarter we're very excited about uh, the new partnership with EDA we're very excited about our new board members uh, they're a very eclectic group of individuals from all over the county that will represent you and the entire county well and our business community as we go forward uh, a couple of issues I want to touch on very quickly as uh, we've been very busy with uh, Opportunity Florida over the last uh, couple of quarters and uh, uh, Mr. Kapinski's on the board there uh, uh, with the county, and Mr. Yeager been very active uh, with our uh, representative for our RASIC, our rural area of uh, critical economic concern. And one of the big focuses of that the last uh, uh, year really has been the telecommunications 
improvements for rural area. Uh, we want it to where eventually everybody uh, on every dirt road and every part of the state will have just equal access uh, to uh, broadband internet capabilities as they do in the, the more uh, uh, populated areas and the more, uh, uh, I guess, uh, metropolitan type areas. And we, we think our, our children need equal access at their home that they do. But important on the economic development aspect is we need uh, our IT companies that we're talking to, both the current ones such as Health Check up at Overstreet and, and others that we're talking to about relocating here, they, they have to have that broadband capability and, and the improvements there. And, uh, they're working with the cities and the counties in our uh, RASIC area right now to, to establish and locate uh, the different microwave uh, transmission tower. I believe they're talking to the city next week in regards to using space on uh, the water tower here uh, in, in, the, in the city and county as well. So that's a very big uh, item they've been working for a long time. Uh, the, the former long-term director, Rick Markham, retired recently to Ecuador of all places. I guess he's going to become a consultant like everybody else and make money. Uh, down in Central America, but uh, he, it's a good contact for us to have in that area as, as the port develops and looking into Central America and the uh, Panama Canal. So uh, Jim Brooke is the new director. Jim has talked to us about coming uh, sometime in the next quarter and speaking before uh, the city and the county commissions as well as possibly uh, an open forum for the uh, p public to get input on their uh, opinion on some things they're working on. But Jim does a great job and we're well uh, represented there. Uh, speaking of Opportunity Florida, we've got a meeting next week. Uh, and uh, Commissioner Yeager has been very, very instrumental and active in working with the Boyette Strategies. Uh, Dale Boyette is uh, uh, one of the most respected site consultants uh, in the country. He has been uh, tasked with the uh, uh, responsibility to develop a rural economic development marketing plan uh, for Enterprise Florida in return for our region. Uh, he has a lot of expertise uh, in the southern area doing that in the past. At one time, he was the economic development director for the state of Georgia and before that, the state of Arkansas. So he kind of knows a little bit about what he's doing. And we're very excited about the information that uh, I think, Mr. Yeager, uh, you forwarded that to probably everybody in the room a couple of weeks ago to let people look over before we have this meeting next week. And we're very excited to get uh, th that underway. And, and uh, Florida's done a great job of, uh, of branding and marketing uh, the tourism. Uh, everybody knows that Florida has beaches. Everybody knows that Florida has Disney World. Now everybody knows that Florida's got Gulf County uh, with our new director uh, leading the work uh, there. But we've not done as well of a job for two reasons in, in marketing, economic development. And it's, there's two reasons for that. Number one, the budget, uh, where the tourism had a $20 million budget. Uh, I, I believe that the, the, uh, the uh, economic development had less than a $1 million budget. This is statewide for a, a, a state of $19 million. Uh, for example, uh, Mississippi had three times that, for st a state of three million people. So uh, they're, they're putting money into where their mouth is and they're getting uh, the message out there, but also uh, uh, they're catching a little bit of grief there in Tallahassee about the word incentives, uh, tagging the words such as corporate welfare and things like that on that. Well, as an economic developer, in theory, incentives <laughs> it, it, in a perfect world would be great if there were no incentives. If we, it's just a level playing field, we all just go out there with what we got to work. But when Florida, is not using incentives, but Georgia, Mississippi, Alabama, and so on are using incentives. That's the rules of the ball game. And if you don't apply the rules of the ball game, then you lose the ball game. So finally, under Governor Scott and Mr. Schwope, we're we're getting into the ball game and playing by the rules, and we're starting to compete well, and we're starting to get noticed uh, by some of the larger manufacturers. Uh, there's two or three automobile companies that are looking at possibly putting a plan in within the next uh, couple of years, uh, as long as the economy keeps a humming as it is right now. But uh, we are back in the game, and it's, uh, it's exciting to have the leadership there. I'm just hoping we can weather the storm of some of the negative uh, terms that have been thrown at Mr. Swope and at, at Governor Scott and, and at all of us uh, the, about the, the words that we're picking and choosing to use right now. But it is looking a whole lot better. Uh, we're definitely getting uh, uh, a more unified approach in regards to our marketing and our strategy. Uh, uh, Mr. Swope, uh, as I said, he has done this as well as Mr. Boyette at two different states. He's done it well in two other states, in Mississippi and in Arkansas, and, and he's doing a good job here. So we're excited to get this uh, session hopefully over with and, and uh, get back uh, to business between now and the next election session and just worry about getting jobs to Florida. Uh, another group we're working with is the Megasite Coalition. And what the Megasite Coalition basically is is a two-state uh, uh, coalition of uh, Florida and Alabama. They're also negotiating with Georgia to kind of get them involved. And what that will do is basically uh, we're trying to develop a site in our region that will uh, be very attractive to larger manufacturers such as automobile, aircraft, uh, 
parts, uh, any kind of large heavy industrial type uh, uh, situations there. Now Port St. Joe and uh, Gulf County are probably not the best location for an automobile plant. Uh, the first thing they usually look for, they want to be on an interstate for transportation reasons. We've got everything in Gulf County that you'd want with the exception of a four-lane highway, which we're all working on. But uh, we do have four lanes in our region. What would happen is if we do get a, uh, a, a uh, an automobile plant to locate, let's say in Mariana, just as for example, on I-10, that's good for us. And the reason that's good for us, number one, it's good for our regional partners. It's, it's we can all, uh, these invisible lines that we all, these borders we put up, these invisible lines we call counties, we drive back and forth across them all the time making livings and working together. But what would do for us is we would be in line for tier one or two uh, supplier support uh, companies here. Uh, automobile manufacturing is actually not a manufacturer, it's an assembler. And they assemble parts that are manufactured at plants usually within a one to two hour uh, radius of there. So if an auto plant came to Mariana, Florida, possibly we would Hitchka, Port St. Joe, Apalachicola, Panama City could possibly be vying for uh, plants to make uh, you know, rubber, plastic, aluminum, steel, different parts that are assembled in that final way there. And uh, so that, that's where regionalism comes uh, uh, the key for future vegan development, particularly for rural areas. We have to work with our, uh, our, our larger partners in the region. And speaking of that, we've recently been added to the, uh, the MSA for the Panama City uh, MSA. And what that will do in regards to being part of the Panama City MSA is we can use the statistics for the whole MSA. And it, it's kind of like any sales or marketing, you want to kind of puff yourself up and make yourself look as good and as big and large as you can. And what that does, we can use the statistics of workforce and labor and uh, job creation such as that in our uh, marketing plans now. We can, we can put that in there and, and again, it'll, it'll show the statistics of, t of an area of 200,000 rather than a county of 15,000. So that will be very large for us to work with Mr. Wade and, and Gulf, and uh, excuse me, uh, Bay County and uh, our partners in Apalachicola and that region as well. So a lot of good things are happening. We're, uh, we're working very well with our regional partners. I've had several uh, meetings with Mr. Butler and his staff and I think we're getting along very well. We had a lunch with a prospect a couple of weeks ago. Mr. Smiley attended that as well and, and, and things are starting to really come together well. Everybody is, uh, 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 gets the big picture. We need jobs. And uh, the last thing I'll touch on is our uh, expansion and retention efforts. We, uh, we meet regularly with our local businesses throughout the county. Uh, we've got a couple of projects in particular we're working on with uh, uh, Health Check up in the Overstreet area. We're looking, trying to help them uh, uh, attain new business. Health Check works with hospitals throughout the United States, as most of you are well aware of. Health Check has uh, around 50 employees up in Overstreet. A lot of people don't realize they're one of our large employers here in the Gulf County area. And uh, they're an outstanding company with three locations throughout the country. And uh, one thing that I'm doing is trying to uh, put them in partner with other hospitals in the Mid-South and Midwest area, areas that I've worked in before where I have contacts. We'll put her contact and my contact together and hopefully they'll uh, attain some of that business. And of course, the more business they have, the more people they're going to hire. So it's another area where we work together in marketing and strategies and, 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 and the contacts. And, and uh, we're very excited about their, uh, their uh, ideas and possibilities of really growing over the next couple of years at Health Check. Uh, Polarmatic uh, is a company that I believe the gentleman spoke here a couple of months ago. We're, we're talking to, uh, we, we're, we're uh, not only trying to f help him develop more customers for his ice machines he makes, but also he's got a nice machine shop there just a couple of blocks over here. And, and he actually has the, uh, uh, the machinery and the employees that can do contract work for other people, such as some of our pr uh, prospects we're talking to about relocating here. He can kind of be a sedge way to help them get here with a, a smaller expense on the front end and help them with his machine shop until they can either decide to use him permanently or maybe wean off onto their own machine shop uh, situation there. So it's just an idea of, uh, of communicating and, and, and working with each other and, and, and being there uh, uh, for our, our businesses and helping them grow and, and, and as well as adding in uh, our recruiting efforts, which we hope to uh, kick in full force the first of the month. I'm going to Atlanta for uh, up to a week and uh, talk to every site selector in the Atlanta and the South Carolina area. There's several just across the board there in South Carolina. And uh, talk to the ones there that uh, let them know that our, uh, our county is open for business. Our port is definitely now open for business. And we certainly want jobs here in Gulf County. Thank you, Mr. Barry. Let me uh, mention something to Barry Wayne. I had a call from uh, Crypto, the Capital Regional Transportation Organization. Harry Reid actually came down and took a look at our port about a year, year and a half ago met with some of the uh, officials and, and myself. 
and had a call last week from one of their uh, one of their folks that sit on that committee. They would really love to engage in, in a more more productive way with trying to help Gulf County get this port uh, going. They realize the importance and the regionalism of this particular port uh, to the point that they, you know, they represent, I think, about five counties over there. It's Jefferson, Leon, Gadsden, mm -hmm. Wakulla, maybe one other. Uh, but uh, they are certainly uh, had discussion in their last uh, meeting and would love to come down and maybe formalize even something. They don't want to come down and tell, tell you know, the port how to do business or, or, or St. Joe or anything mm -hmm. else. What they want to do is be a, a, a part of trying to assist and help uh, the port get the infrastructure it needs so they they all know that they'll benefit from that. They're, they're looking at rail. They're looking at different things that if we get the rail going from, from our port, it's, it's a possibility for inland ports for them. As far, uh, it's, a, it's an opportunity for better transportation for their areas and all those kinds of things. So I think a dialogue needs to be started, and I don't know how you would put it together, but they want to be a part of that. So that may be somebody that you want to contact, Harry Reid with Capital Regional. I got scared you said Harry Reid at first, but that's a different Harry Reid. So yeah, that's we, a yeah, different we'll be, Harry Reid. We'll excited about that then. So yes, sir, we'll, we'll definitely I'll get with Tommy this afternoon. We'll Thank you very you. much, Mr. Barry. Thank you, Barry. Thank you. Thank you, Barry. <clears throat> Have a good day. Um, Mr. Chairman, I pulled pages 13 through 28 from the consent agenda, which was um, it is the EDA agreement between the county and the Economic Development Alliance. You all, we all received a, um, a more current revision from the county attorney on April 3rd. It was last Wednesday at 2.14 p.m. Um, it's just a, it, it's revised some of the language and um, simplified a few of the items in the agreement. And uh, this board has expressed its its eagerness and willingness to move forward with the Economic Development Alliance. And once we have this agreement executed, they can they can move forward and, and uh, they only have about 18 months under this agreement, so we need to get them going. And I would like to make the motion that we accept the <coughs> version of the EDA agreement that the attorney sent out on April 3rd at 2.14 p.m. The, there was a markup red line that he had sent. Is that the same agreement as in the consent? It, it's a more current version. It was after the consent that he. Um, it, do you all have a copy right in front of you with a number two on it? So you all have that, which was sent out last Wednesday. So you have. Mr. Novak, would Commissioner McLemore had received it in a fashion? Uh. I believe, well. It should have been included in your packet, Mr. McLemore, <coughs> that you received with your agenda in it. Is this the one that you that you adopted, Mr. Attorney? You wrote that. <laughs> Is this the agreement? The the one that I uh, wrote up was in your actual consent agenda, um, and we received uh, additional comments and requests of the EDA. And those are in the red line markups of what you have in front of you with the number two that was circulated mm -hmm. on last Wednesday afternoon. Okay. So the one in the consent agenda is, is the EDA agreement that I proposed. And, and uh, that's the one I'm going to support. I mean, he's worked hard on this. The attorney has. And, you know, I think we should follow our attorney. That's what we have him for. Well, the, the newer version is the same agreement that Mr. Novak drafted. Just has some more uh, revisions based on um, feedback from various parties and some clarification. Um, Mr. Novak, do you have any comments? We we had discussed some of the changes that yeah. you felt that you were on board with all of the yeah, changes. Yeah, the yeah the, and I have no objection to um, the revisions. What you'll see in there, most importantly, in the consent version, was the uh, term which was this commission approved for a two-year commitment. Um, so we revised that. The additional comments are, you know, um, rewording or recrafting some of the deliverables by the EDA. I have no objection to the language, uh, commissioners. The one, um, you know, like I said, most importantly would be still the outstanding bylaws, um, the budget, the, the uh, presentment schedule for, per the statute. 
Um, so some of the additional exhibits still need to be received from the EDA, which I believe they've met two or three times and they're working on. I know we have some of the folks here. Um, but those are on the last page. And as you look at page number 23, or actually number 15 of your agreement, it itemizes those things that, you know, what we'll still need from the EDA. Mr. Attorney, we need to make clear on this. Now, do we need to, do we need to support what you had in the consent? Or do we need to go on well, a little further with this? I mean, I want to I make sure that we're definitely clear. I'm okay with what you put <coughs> in the consent. I understand that that's what you did. Right. I don't want to go any further with that with some other out in wherever it may be. I want to go and follow your instructions on this. Mr. Chairman, may I? Floor is open. Yes. Uh, Commissioner McLemore, we had the original or the 12th day of March, and now we have one April the uh, 1st. It's a modified. That's what I'm talking about. Modified version. Modified. Now, uh, the modified version <coughs> clarifies the deliverables. Um, I want to be certain that. The EDA understands what is required of them. I don't want us to start off in a position that puts them behind the eight ball. I want this to be an, an effort where we work together and we provide them with everything that they need to succeed. That is reasonable. And the communication is there. I want it to be clear and definable so that you can say, Yes, you did what you were supposed to do, or mm -hmm. no, you didn't. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, the revisions just tighten up the agreement. It's very common when you have an agreement drafted to make several re revisions. Um, Mr. Novak, I'm an attorney. You're an attorney. Do you often have several revisions to an agreement? And it's very common. That is how you tighten up your agreement and define it. But my goal was to have defined deliverables that you can say you didn't meet what was required. My goal is to follow that man right over there. That's what we hire him for. That's what we pay him for. I believe in him. If he decided it need tightening up, I think he would have suggested it to begin with. He would have never put it in the consent agenda. So I don't support your motion, point blank. Well, I hope the other commissioner commissioners will consider that the attorney has reviewed the revisions and has signed off on the revisions and is comfortable with the revisions. And again, I'll, I'll renew my motion that we approve the final revision received from the attorney uh, last Wednesday on April 3rd. I got a motion on the floor by Ms. Bryant. Can I get a second? I got a motion on the floor by Ms. Bryant. Can I get a second? and get a second from the board, motion fails. May I make a motion to accept the one that's in the consent agenda? I got a motion on the floor by Mr. Michael Moore to accept the one that's in the consent agenda. I get a second. Second for discussion. I got a second for <coughs> discussion by Mr. Mike Daniels. Uh, I'm in agreement with this. We've got some conditions. Uh, is any of the uh, economic development alliance is the chairman here, Mr. Uh, Magnuson? Would you please, Mr. Chairman, would that be all right if he approaches? <coughs> Good morning. Good morning. Gary Magnuson, <coughs> Port St. Joe. Mr. Magnuson, let me ask you a few questions if you don't object, please. Sure. You are the chairman of the new Economic Development Alliance. Is yes, that sir. correct? That's correct. All right. Before, there's going to be some conditions with this uh, in here. Now, I think with all uh, due respect, I think Mr. Sellers can live with this. I think he can work with this. I think he wants to hit the ground running, and I'm behind Mr. Sellers. He know, is. We uh, voted to uh, uh, give our money back here. It was a very close vote. Uh, I got praise from some, criticism from others. I was on the favor of less continuing but 
we've got to have some stipulations in here and some of the questions I want to ask you and I'm not uh, uh, I am directing this to you at being that you are chairman of it where are you at on your bylaws uh, the bylaws are completed as well as our budget we are ready to get those to uh, council for approval and to put into the uh, consent agenda okay well, before we released, I know this is, it's all about money. We need money to operate. But before we, before I'm going to vote to release any of this money, I want to look over these bylaws. I want to know what's in them. I want to know your calendar. I want to know, uh, you know, uh, I want to review them. I want to uh, review these bylaws. I've just made me some notes this morning coming down. Where's your uh, reporting calendar where you report to the state? It's a Florida statute. Uh, you have to ask Mr. Sellers about that. Okay. All right. We will. But you understand, and you do have a budget? You yes, have a sir. budget set up? Yes, sir. All right. When would this board be able to review that? Uh, as soon as I get it to council. Okay. All right. We have a deadline on there because I know you need uh, I money, can, and I I'm can, just I like can, I tell you right now, I I'm not going to vote turn these people's money loose just right. to hand it out. I can get it to him this afternoon, before. sir. He can have it this afternoon. All right. It's already been approved by the board. And, Commissioner McDaniel, if I may, one of the issues with forming their documents, I believe they wanted to be certain that they've covered everything that was required of them in our agreement so that they can perform in the way that we asked them to. So they were waiting to finalize everything okay. on right. what our agreement requires them to do. And one of the issues with the revisions in this the last version of the agreement that was set out, <coughs> it's just, they're just a little bit more defined. Um, it's hard to define pro providing support for the Workforce Development Board. Um, the, language was changed to communicate and provide necessary information. Um, there's a, a termination provision in the agreement that allows the board to terminate in 90 days with cause. And um, one of the changes was to allow for notice and an opportunity to cure so that you would notice the EDA that there is an issue and give them the opportunity to cure that issue before termination the kind of um, revisions that this board is is refusing to accept so I, I just want to put that out there if you re review the revisions, you'll find that it just defines what is required of the EDA now <coughs> that being said I believe that they need to form their documents in order to be able to perform under what we're requiring in our finalized agreement. Mr. Chairman, uh, I'll let my motion, my second stand. Go ahead with a vote on it. Uh, on the, to adopt, the motion was, uh, Commissioner McLemore, that we adopt the uh, original, original uh, ascended, uh, ascended consent. I vote no. We got one opposed. Motion carries, vote one. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just briefly, I'll, we, uh, <clears throat> on Friday we had an oil spill consortium meeting uh, up in Tallahassee with the 23 counties that, that uh, we're part of. We uh, finally got the memorandum of understanding with the governor's office, got all that approved, so we're, uh, we are well on our way to working with the governor's office. He's going to put six officio members on that consortium. They won't have voting privileges, but they will give us guidance. And so we're moving forward with, with everything. everything. Everybody, including the counties, are waiting on uh, Treasury rules, which supposedly uh, before the end U.S. Treasury. U.S. Treasury. And uh, supposedly that w will come as early as July. And so that's what we're hoping to get the Treasury rule set because there's already money that's been in the fine process that goes into those pots. And so we need to get those Treasury rules so all of us can start our process. So uh, that was uh, 
that was the, the bulk of the meeting was uh, working with uh, working with the governor's office with that and also I gave a presentation on where Gulf County is with its uh, its own pot of money and establishing the the uh, uh, committee that we have putting criteria together uh, Don you've probably already got some calls about getting some of the criteria that we put together some of them have already adopted this very similar criteria from what we have some of them hadn't put their committee yet to, together but they're working on that now and they've saw our structure and so just gave them a, 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 an update and I'll keep y'all informed as we move forward with that uh, thank you mr. chairman a couple of three items uh, gonna bring this before the board I don't need a vote on it mr. Butler and I and uh, mr. Lewis back here will be working on this but have a bridge up in the Stone Mill Creek area it was uh, put in several years ago it's uh, the rail car bridge and the uh, asphalt on it it's tearing apart tearing loose and we've got to address that uh, get it resurfaced and uh, Butler and Mr. Lewis and I will look into that and get back and see how much it's going to cost us to do it but it's something we've got to do secondly an issue uh, I got a call over the weekend we've had rain we've had a lot of rain and more rain and I mentioned this with Miss Kapinski but out in the Overstreet area with this hummingbird now mr. Lewis he's down to one motor grader and he's been you can't grade wet ground it won't work and he's had to with well, mother nature's trying to help him along but I know he's trying to get all these sec secondary these unpaid roads back into order I know the Jarrett Daniels is a very highly traveled road and it took major major damage during this uh, rain here a month ago so ago also out at Hummingbird but I want the people to know we're working on it we are not it, we're working on it and we'll try to get it back where we can get it going uh, next mr. chairman with our parks we have uh, I don't know we every district has multiple parks uh, we have a contract with a young lady to do the park service to pick up the trash in our parks and she approached me over the weekend number one it's not a money issue number two it's not a labor issue it's a household garbage issue uh, yesterday morning I had to come down I stopped by at White City. People, when people go to one of these parks, you're going to find soft drink cans, possibly potato chip bags, but you don't find egg shells. And I went through some of the garbage there. We're the, the dumpsters were running over with household garbage. You go out to a Veterans Park, the same way there, household garbage. And no matter who gets this contract. They didn't take this contract to go in competition with waste management. We've got to address the issue of household garbage being disposed of in our park areas. It's terrible. It's terrible. Mr. McDaniel, may I address yes. the board? Um, the um, contractor contacted me about this issue um, shortly after beginning this contract and it's been a forever issue every contractor that has had this contract prior uh, to our current contractor has had this issue our work crews during the week have this issue it is tremendous um, what we did with some of our parks had previously had signs saying no household garbage we had several that didn't White City was one of them so we we posted signage um, Mr. Butler and I discussed possibly uh, putting cameras in some of these areas as a deterrent and, and to assist local law enforcement um, with supporting us in this endeavor and that's something that would take an expense from, from the county to install these cameras but we could use that as a deterrent as well and those signages are also posted there um, if in case the board did want to approve that so we could possibly put some cameras in some areas at expense to the county to to try to deter this cost but getting back to the issue the contractor whoever whomever it may be 
it's responsible for a dumpster that they pay for and garbage bags that they pay for and toilet tissues and different things. But when they need, one dumpster will handle the park. Now we had a uh, situation on the 30th, uh, the, out at Veterans Park, had a big blowout, the garbage and the that, that's something I, that there up at Dead just... Lakes Park we had one over the holiday a lot of it was heavily loaded this is just these on these special events the ball season opened up and we were Hitchka and uh, you know this contract person all this is falling on them you know with no warning in advance but they can't afford whoever it is it doesn't matter they can't afford to uh, buy or rent three or four dumpsters but one would handle the park uh, it, trash it's definitely have been to tie an up issue three for household garbage with people in there throwing in using our park facility to dump garbage we're going to have to address this somewhere there it don't matter who's got it to do it right it, it it's been a forever issue um it, with, with no deterrent on. and and we need a deterrent Mr. I, Chairman, I, I, it, it, I tell you, it's time for mandatory government pickup. That was exactly. fixing to be my. Exactly. Could, we could fix that Discussion. problem real easy. A well, mandatory target got to pick up. Big topics in budget. So that's something when you when we bring it back up and get to talking about it, I think that should be at the top of the list. Is a mandatory garbage pickup. I think for the time being, and I know the sheriff worked with us on this. If he would alert his deputies, and I guarantee you, all you got to do is hit one or two. And you'll eventually catch one or two, and most likely they're going to be from out of town when you catch them. But uh, he could probably help us Wait, with this issue. Mr. The only, only thing I can say about that issue, you know, if we stop them from putting it in the parks, they're going to put it on the side of the road. Yeah, unless you've got mandatory uh, garbage pickup. And, and if you got, got mandatory no garbage more. pickup, I mean, you're going to pay for your garbage pickup, so, you know. I throw it on the road. I mean, put it in somebody else's dumpster. Ms. Mr. McLemore, just for just for clarification purposes, um, the White City Park and the Beacon Hill Park have consistently been a problem with household garbage all during the winter months. It's not been just a recent issue. It's okay. not now that it's okay. becoming. It's, uh, it's all another the time. angle we can work it work work at this is is with um, my our code enforcement, and when they throw that garbage out there. I he has, he has There's been, he has been through trash. Bag. Yes, he has. He's already done that and can't find anything. We, we, we need we, to we. keep trying because yes, sooner sir. or later they're going to mess up. <laughs> They'll put it in there. Um, it, 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 my business, I, my garbage dumpster runs over numerous of times, and, and basically it's garbage bags from someone else coming up once we're not around and just throw garbage in there and run it over with. I um, I still say a mandatory garbage pickup will, I mean, how to take care of that problem. That's something that the board I'll need to it. sit down and consider. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, Chairman, I have one other thing if, when yes, you sir. get a chance. Go ahead on, mister. I was going to ask the sheriff, have we started, I, I know I've seen him down there a time or two, but have we started the beach patrol on a regular basis, sheriff? Yes, sir. I'm utilizing my, my their officer, and on Tuesdays and Thursdays, he's in school teaching there, but on the other days, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and then occasionally on the weekends, uh, I've, I've got him out there, as well as uh, other patrol officers out there on the beach. Okay. Uh, Looking probably within the next uh, um, month or so to put additional person out there to where we got full coverage on the weekends as well. Okay, and you know you've got that, uh, and I don't know if they initially put it in your budget to begin with, but the <coughs> beach patrol money yes, sir. is there. It's okay. Okay. Thanks. Hey, Mr. Yeager. Um, <coughs> I just want to sit down and speak on uh, something that was really dear to my heart that I, uh, you know. When I took on this position of being a county commissioner and put my name on the paper to run for a county commissioner, I had no self-interest at heart. It was all about trying to help someone. And I spoke, uh, speaking with different people and being able to go around, especially since I got to working with this SHIP program. Ever since I worked with the SHIP program, kind of took that on special myself because it helps out a lot of people. Well, I listened to Ms. Bryant talk about the interlocal agreement. Uh, we 
the city right now has about 100 acres of land or affordable apartment complexes that we can reach out and help people with. 100 acres of land sitting there. But they chose to go out here to Winmark and set something up for a bunch of people who can afford to stay wherever they want to stay at in this United States. Just so happened they didn't shoot, they didn't chose Winmark. And we stuck with it. But I guarantee you, if we would have took time out and put money into affordable places for people to live, it would be full. But we spent money out there on Winmark. We even took money from the city, but gave it to the county to spend to get that project. And when I looked at that, that in a local, it was nothing but greed. Everybody who made that decision in that was out to get some for a personal gain. And they want to know why it failed. Anytime you go after something for a personal game, you don't it, it, you got a very slim chance of making it. Because it's all about me. Me can't make it by itself. It takes us. It takes we. We got to work together. We don't have a photo. I was just listening to some of the old timers talk about the years ago when they built the affordable complexes over the apartments in Apalachicola and Wewa, and they wanted to build some in St. Joe, and we had a group of guys to stand up and say, we don't want that in St. Joe. And the reason they don't want it in St. Joe because it was about them. Now that those guys is dead and gone and in the grave and them old houses that they had, they're not working. And the government right here, it's designed to help the people. And, and I'm not, not throwing nobody up under the bus, but I'm not out here to try to help people who can afford to live wherever they want to live. They don't, don't have one car in the driveway. They got three, four cars in the driveway. They got a big boat. Those kind of people is doing pretty good. And we could complain about they having to pay a little bit more taxes and stuff, and that's, that's a legitimate complaint. But when you got people, you walk in their houses, and you can see the outside of the house, Mr. the outside from the inside, and we sit here and call ourselves a local government and can't reach out and help our own people? We got land sitting here ready to be worked on. We got more interest in putting a lighthouse up than putting a place for somebody to live in. And I have nothing against the lighthouse. I'm not talking bad about the lighthouse. I think it's a wonderful project. But this is a must need to be addressed right now. To put up something for people, affordable for people to live in. Not $800 a month. You got somebody got an old place for rent and they want to rent it for $800 because greed is on their doorstep. We got to get as much as we can get. That in a local agreement, I'm just, I just sat back and looked at it. It's a shame and a disgrace. That in a local agreement. It, it, it really is. I'm, 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 I, it really, my heart has really been aching because people that need help was not considered nowhere in that agreement. It was all about people who want to put some in their pocket. And if you sit down and look at everybody's name that's on there and involved in it, you can pick it out. So I will not call no name. But it's public record. You can get it and see it for yourself. And when I put my eyes on it and start reading, I said, Lord, what's going on? What's going on? Our food bank's lines right now, our food bank's line is longer than ever. Trying to help people. Mr. Mike, Mr. Michael Moore got, helped me got started with a food bank right here in St. Joe, and we got lines running all right. People coming from everywhere trying to get assistance. People don't have nowhere to live. How can some of the people sleep knowing that somebody got a child? Knowing that some old person who can't get up and work no more they don't tow their body up trying to make this community what it is and they can't work nowhere and they don't have nowhere to stay and we don't care. Nobody said nothing about trying to bring something in here to help people who need help. So, my thing is, this is something that I'm grabbing a hold to and running with. I don't care about no lighthouse. 
I don't care about no win mark. I want to help some people who need help. 1,600 lots out there we put out there for people to come in. I think we had about 15 to 20. made a, a different agreements that then these guys sat down and made these different agreements and I mean it was all personal greed you know I, 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 I want to live in a big nice house I want to drive the big nice fancy vehicles but my god I'm not going to knock nobody down to get to it because it's enough for him for everybody this is the land of opportunity. This is the land of the rich. That's what they tell me every day I listen to it. And we treat our poor people around here like they, they don't even, they, they're not a purpose here. Come on, guys. I need some people to get on board with me about this before we got the land. Someone told me, said the first step, Tan, is to find out do we have the land. Well, we got 100 acres of land. We got uh, 42 acres of land off of Clifford Sims. We got 50, 58 acres of land over here behind the uh, city warehouse. We got the land. Let's do something about this. That's it for me. Do we have anything else from the public? Yes, ma'am. <coughs> Christy McElroy, 1311 Woodward Avenue, Port St. Joe, Florida, USA. Um, as a taxpayer, I am glad that you, that we had a report from the EDA. Um, I want to make sure we, we gave the EDA or we'll be giving them 80 grand. Is that correct? $80,000? Yes. Okay. So that's of taxpayers' money. Uh, there are many agencies, and to your point, Commissioner, uh, I think the taxpayers and the people that are out there that are hurting, as well as the ones that are more fortunate, uh, should have updates. Uh, Ms. Jenkins constantly gives us updates. So any agency within our county that is receiving county funds, for example, uh, $200,000 was given to the Port Authority, is that correct? Yes. And I'm just waiting for uh, Mr. Pitts to come before this board because to your point, Commissioner <coughs> Smiley, we need jobs and we need to know where we are. And if that money is coming out of my pocket and your pocket and everybody in this room's pocket or downtown redevelopment agency or, or the Chamber of Commerce, anybody that's receiving money from the taxpayers, we have a right <coughs> to know what is going on and updates in order, as you said, Commissioner, that we all look like we're working together. And again, I would like to commend Ms. Jenkins. She always is proactive and forthcoming. We do have good tourism. I think because she communicates so well, that's why we have an increase in revenues. Communication, working together, understanding what <coughs> our strengths and our opportunities are, or how we make the county successful so as a taxpayer I would like to see everyone understand that we need to hear from our agencies um, I am glad that we do have a travel policy in place now um, but before we finish up with that uh, because of some comments that were made at the last meeting I want to make sure that I understand how my funds are being spent so two quick questions. Um, commissioners, have you ever paid $400 a night for a hotel room while doing Gulf County business? This would include, of course, various conferences or other meetings that pertain to county business. Have you ever paid $400 a night? No. Ms. Lynn? My knowledge. OK. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been to Las Vegas, Nevada? in order to conduct Gulf County business. Yes, can I get a motion, Mr. Chair? Motion by Mr. McDaniels. You haven't. 
Can I get a second? So, Ms. Lynn, do you know if any Ms. Gulf County? Hold up for a minute. Can I get a motion? I got a motion by Mr. Mike Daniels. Can I get a second? Second, second by Mr. Yeager. Okay, continue. Okay. So, Bill, Bill Wait Cram, a minute. What was your question? Have you ever attended um, a Las Vegas, in, uh, doing Gulf County business, a, any sort of meetings in Las Vegas, Nevada? No. Okay. Uh, <coughs> so, Mr. Coran, in his statement at the last Gulf County meeting, indicated. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Indicated this is not hold proper hold for it. county business to have a citizen come in, up and talk about another citizen at this meeting. If Ms. McElroy wants information on travel, she can make a public records request. She knows that. She's practiced that. Now, Ms. McElroy, you've been before this board many times. I'm on this board now, and I, I am not going to have people attacked no one's in the being community. Attacked. Hold it for a minute, Ms. McElroy. Let Ms. Bryant finish. And the person that is being attacked is not here to defend themselves. This is about county business. It's not about Ms. McElroy and her personal issues. You've come before this board in the past. You've said things. You've put things into the record that aren't exactly true. You put half of the information out. You made a statement in here about an email that you sent to a couple of the um, citizens in our community. And you accuse them of having cameras and listening devices in a meeting with you. And Chairman, you talk I call about for a point response, of order. Yes. But, but you didn't talk about the response. Ms. Bryant. Back to I you. Are you nuts? Stay away. Ms. Bryant. I, I'm not going to. Right now, I'm, I'm at the point right now. I mean, we had a citizen to come before us last week and accuse of us a bunch of things, which that didn't bother me at all. So. I mean, and I'm, I'm with you about discussing the county business. You know. She wants to ask us. You shouldn't be talking no. about citizens. So if, you, if you're going to speak, just refrain okay. from using All right. the citizen's a, name. A PAC member uh, asked these questions or made these accu accusations about $400 a night hotels, okay, and Las Vegas. A PAC member. All right? So what I'm concerned about as a citizen is provocative rhetoric that comes before this board and and if you are registered as a PAC you're a political organization all I am Miss Bryan is an individual could, single could you refer citizen. to the board don't just refer to the board so we can keep all this from one to another I, I, to I'll be board. happy to do that sir and the other thing is you all have always conducted yourself selves as gentlemen towards me and i want you to know that is greatly appreciated thank you do we have anybody else from the public mr chairman i would like to say um for all citizens out there if there are any questions for expenses or anything they are always welcome to submit a public records request to the clerk's office all that information can be provided also she had mentioned some of the reports um, for the different agencies we do receive i am new so cannot attest to all of them but i do know that we do receive those on regular basis uh, whatever their agreements are and those again can be requested through the clerk's office for a public records request that's public records and anybody can receive them. yes there may be a fee associated with it right. but they are available to the public uh we on your request so mm -hmm. yes miss pat <coughs> Patricia Hardman, 123 Marin Lane, Port St. Joe. Just two quick things. Uh, to speak to your problem with the uh, uh, household garbage getting in the, in the dumpsters, the construction companies have a horrible time with this, um, and it is ongoing. It has just been continuous. And what happens to us, because construction garbage can't have household garbage in it or you have to pay for them to separate it so every time one of our dumpsters is out there and somebody goes and throws their household stuff in it it cost us an extra 150 to 200 dollars to have it dumped so it is not just a, a county problem or problem there to say it's only visitors no i can tell you because of know of a couple out on the cape that could very well afford their garbage pickup that don't 
and they find garbage cans down the down the road and put them in, and people see them do it every day, every every week. So it is important that we start looking at some mandatory pickup to do it. Second thing that but before you get off that, Miss Pat, if you don't yes. mind, if the board would, I think that something should be added to the to the uh, workshop uh, that we're going to have on the landfill. I mean, it's, it's a direct effect. If if you, if you think we have time, Joe, I'm already ahead of you. Okay. All right, good. <laughs> and, and we could do a re, the, the recycle uh, issue, too, in that, too. So if you're... That's part of it, too. Great. Okay. That, was, that was the next question, which I'll follow. Um, the other thing is, is that are we pushing with FEMA to get some help out there on the, on the Cape? Um, you know, even with the cleaning of the beach, which... Uh, TDC put out last, I think it was last week, and we and we put it out further. Um, questions became came out as to cleaning as you go out from the rocks to to the to from the stump hole to the uh, it, park, and we can't go out there because we don't have any beach to go out on. If if I understand, FEMA can make a decision to move forward with that sand if they want to do it. We need to put some pressure on FEMA to go ahead and make a decision. It, you know, let's, let's rattle some uh, legislators' chains up there. It's not all about gun control. Let's let them know we need some sand. And, and can we do a little pushing? I know we've got a lobbyist, and thank God y'all have done that. I mean, I know we have to have that. But we need a little push because one storm, and I can tell you, we're going to lose homes badly. It, it's, it's, it is bad out there. The TDC has already said they can't get their equipment out there to clean. That's how bad it is. If you hadn't been out there, you need to go. But we need some help. We need some relief. And, and it's up to you all to, to do it. If, if we don't rattle cages, uh, politicians tend to forget it. <laughs> yeah. So thank you all. Please, please look at, at, at doing something to help us out there before we lose homes and we lose tax revenue. Yeah. Dr. Harden. <coughs> oh, go ahead. Uh, when we were up in Washington, uh, uh, Congressman Sutherland had the head of U.S. Fisheries in his office to meet directly with us, and that's one reason that otherwise we wouldn't have got to have seen him and uh, uh, with the instructions to get this moving. Also on the COBRA, and I have, I think I have a copy of it, I'm not sure for you, but uh, this bill that was introduced into the House of Representatives was to go along. We've got probably four counties in the state of Florida, so we're not going this alone. We got Connecticut that's involved with it, we got Maryland that's involved. It, they're in these same situations. <coughs> so by bundling it and getting these other uh, United States representatives and sent, remember, it has to be a, it has, it has to go been. through Congress. Congress is the only one that can lift it. We're talking Cobra now. Can lift this. We stand. Our chances are better today than they were six months ago. So when when yes, did y'all go are, to see Sutherland? When did when did you have that meeting? Uh, it was uh, like the March the third or second. This past this past March. Yes. Third, Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Yes. Let let us know if there's anything we can there. do to rattle cages for the FEMA issue. I know Cobra is a long term. And yeah, that's, that's, that's why I was say, We've Pat, got other states that's involved. We're bundling this. Go with it. Okay. The COBRA is a longer issue. The FEMA issue, actually, we, we had promises from FEMA that they would have this uh, decision by January, and it's still we still don't have it now. We don't have it. We're, we're, I, I can show you an email, and I can forward it to you, but uh, the lobbyist has, has met with them last week. Uh, they give her indication that they're trying to make this decision they can they want it to be the right decision and they'll get it to as quick as they can but we we need that 15 million dollars they know we need it we've been hammering on congressman southern i saw karen uh, williams uh, his legislative director in tallahassee uh, thursday friday and uh, uh, she uh, they understand the gravity of it and the importance of it over and beyond that and that's something that that, that we've discussed at the tdc We've got to put a little committee together going to where, it, you know, even if we get the FEMA money, which we think we will, we've got to, we've got to have a long-range plan on how we continue maintaining that beach. Absolutely. You've got to maintain it every seven to ten years. It's not as an expensive a project, but we've got, to, we've got to do our homework, and I think that we're going to set a committee uh, uh, with, within the TDC to do that. So uh, we're pushing every way we can. And, and 
Lordy, private business work like government bureaucracies. Uh, We've been into Stone Ages still. <laughs> Thank y'all. Appreciate Thank you. your help. Mr. McDaniel. Yes. Gave her a copy of the bill. She has you that. Did. Okay. Anyone else from the audience? Bill Williams, <coughs> Mova Street. I have moved. I do want to say I, I talked to Ward early on about our drainage. And he got right on it, and it's working. It works real good. And the lights on the bridge are lit. Some of my neighbors said, what is that? That's the bridge. You never thought before, and then we got lights. So that's really good. The things that I asked came quick. The grading worked, and that's going to be a continual thing, you know that. But uh, the mosquito is doing a good job. So it seems like that last minute I was here, I had a few bullets, and they all taken care of, which I appreciate. There's still some, some issues, but we're not going to get them all one time, mostly pertaining to drainage and the property next to us, which is it's not abandoned its own, but the owners are overseas I'm trying to get where we can control the mosquito population and the brush control. So, because we had a fire out there, as you all know, and the fire folks did a great job. Matter of fact, some of our neighbors um, who are winter birds, they come down, they're from Michigan, and they've they couldn't believe the professionalism of the fire departments and the cooperation. They said, man, we don't get this. I mean, I don't know what they get, but they were really impressed. So things are going better. And uh, if we can just survive this mosquito onslaught, we're doing good. But I appreciate it. And boy, that ditch works. And whoever did it, the, everything's doing well. So right. that's well, Mr. Williams, the no gripes. sitting right back there. Our no department. Yeah. Lewis, he's the one that uh, he did good. He's the one really. He did served, good. I just helped move it along, and I'm glad we could help that community. Now I, I don't know. <clears throat> I talked with the sheriff just a second ago about an area for target shooting or firing firearms. It'd be nice to have. Some, I don't know how to do this, but if we had a designated area in Over Street, which you have a lot of open area in woods, private owned, blah blah blah. I don't know what what it takes. Does the county get involved with it? And everybody would have a area to go find their rifles, and we don't have to worry about ducking while we're cutting grass. So, how, do anybody know how to get that started? Well, the Rifle Association, uh, the, you know, out here at uh, on 71, uh, do do a good job at setting up all that. I know that's a long ways from Over Street. It is. It um, is. That's what I'm saying. But they did buy the property uh, on uh, on Howard's Creek Road, which would, would really be a straight shot. Uh, through the dirt road, through, well, I don't know if that's the county road anymore. They got it blocked up. They got it blocked up. But at any rate, uh, the Rifle Association uh, does a good job at setting things up, setting things up on the weekends. They've got uh, skeet and everything else. They have people coming from Bay County, Calhoun County, all over mm -hmm. the place coming to that place. It's a great organization and uh, a, a unique place. As far as anything outside of, of that particular location, I don't think the county's ever looked at. Yeah, it'd just be handy to have you can go across the street and see some, an I area. Got a motion on the table for more time. So, got a motion by Mr. Yeager. I'm good. I'm yes. good. Right. Thank you, Mr. Yeager. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have anyone else from the public? We have no one else from the public. Can I get a motion? Hey, to the table? Got a motion by Mr. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. I'm good. 